Well, there's a fella that wants me to get this old Ford running so he can use it on the farm again. I say, let's do it. It's a 1977 F600. That's about all I can tell you right now. Uh, I can't find anywhere online to decode the whole VIN, so I don't know what size motor it's got. The fella that owns it told me it's been about five years since it ran, and uh, according to that plate on the front right there, it's been about 10 years since it was tagged. He wants to get it running again so we can use it on a farm here. So we're gonna see what we can do about it. The old truck ain't in bad shape. Got a little bit of rust in the door right over there. Cab corners look brand spanking new. Running boards ain't got no rust. Yeah, it's in pretty doggone good shape. The interior looks really good. Got a metal dash, they got no pad on it. I sorta of like that in these older vehicles. Anyway, let's climb up in it. Well, she's a two-speed. See that knob right there? Mileage, 80,513. Looking at the brake pedal, yeah, it's probably 80,000, not 180. Got a vacuum gauge right there. Uh, yeah, the whole thing ain't in too bad a shape. Of course, we're missing a few things right here. Let's go ahead and hit the brake pedal, see what happens. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it went to the floor, so that's good. What the clutch? It don't feel bad. So we're probably good on it, but the brakes, yeah, we're going to have to work on them. Let's go outside and pop the hood. Well, oh, all righty. Somebody's going to have to come open the hood for me. There we go. Well, definitely a V8. Got a two bubble on it. Um, it looks really similar to an FE 360, 390. I don't, like I said, I don't know Ford. Uh, we'll have to find out, but I believe this may be another <laughs> FE motor. Y'all know I'm not a Ford feller, but this looks really similar to an FE. Uh, what little bit I know, they have an FT, and I think that stood for Ford truck, and it is actually real similar to the FEs. There's some different things, and I can tell right now, water pump's different, water neck is different. Uh, that's about all I can tell right now. Exhaust manifolds look the same. The intake looks the same. You know, the intake comes up under the valve cover, like an FE. Uh, yeah, it's it's probably a 360 or you know somewhere in there. Uh, as soon as I find out, I'll let y'all know. All right, let's check your thing out. Let's see if a carburetor is stuck. No, sir. No, sir. Oh, uh, where's the dipping stick? It ain't over here like it normally is. Dip stick, where are you at, bud? Oh, right here in front of my face. Oh, yeah. So you got plenty of earls. Let's check the water real quick. See if we got any water on it. Come off of there. Oh yeah, yeah, some water. I believe it's in pretty good shape. I'm pretty sure it's not stuck, but you never know. Y'all know some of the stuff that I get myself into. So let's just check and see. Oh yeah, she's turning over. Turning over greatly. Them belts are extremely loose. We'll have to tighten them up. But yeah, she's turning over. Let's pull the distributor cap. We'll look at the pointages, see how they are. I'm sure they're gonna need filing. And uh, we'll throw a battery in it, put some uh, gas cleans in the carburetor, and well, just see what the old girl will do. All righty. Get over there, Mr. Cap. Let me check you out, buddy. What's the cap look like? The cap looks like a brand new one on the inside. I mean, it ain't got hardly no corrosion. Rotor looks pretty good. Points. 
eh, might be a tiny bit. Let me go ahead and sand them, get them cleaned up. I seem to be working on a lot of Fords here lately. What's going on with that? <laughs> All right, I'll put the cap back on. Uh, let's pull the plug. Let's make sure we're getting fire. What size are you, little buddy? You're a dirt dauber size. I believe she's burning a little rich. Yeah, it ain't too bad though. Let's hook this up, put the battery in it, and we'll see if we're getting any sparky sparks. Which way does this go? Ooh. Where's the positive? Here's the positive right here. Let me go right here. And the negative, where you at? Oh, it's right here. Good gracious of life. <laughs> That thing has been beat all to pieces. And of course I got the battery in backwards. I wouldn't expect it to do any other way. Oh yeah. I expect the whole thing to fire right up. But I just want to make sure that we're getting spark. Alright, here we go. Hey! What in the devil? I don't know what's going on here. Well, let me see if I can fix that bad connection. Let me do a little sanding on them uh, things right there. Well, what do I do with my sanding papers? I just had it. I ain't got a clue where it went. <laughs> oh, here it is. All right, let's see if that helps us out any at all. Oh, yeah. Do we have any sparkies? No sir, no sparkies at all. Well, let me get my metry out, see if we're getting voltage to the coal. All right, we're getting 12.38 voltages to the coal. All right, I'm gonna hook this straight to the coal. And uh, let's see if we're getting anything. Well, we're getting fire. It ain't a real big spark though. Let's put the cap back on. Try it through the cap again, because you never know that cap or the rotor here could be bad. Yeah, that's a really, really weak spark. I think what we'll do is uh, I'll get some points and condenser, might get a rotor. Cap looks good. So yeah, let me head to O'Reilly's and get that stuff there. And, Probably gonna do an oil change, so I'll go ahead and get that and whatever else I think I might need. Well, I'm back from Ireland. I got me some Earl, got an Earl filter. Points of condenser right here. I was gonna get a rotor, but they didn't have none. Uh, did you know that O'Reilly's does not list an F600 on the computer? They do not. I figured points, probably the same on all these old Ford V8s. So I just got one for a 71 F100 uh that's dumas and i believe it's going to work so let's get the points condenser on and we might get this thing to run today all right let's get these points changed out real quick see if this thing will fire up is that a 517 or is it a quarter 517 it is son of a gun what in the devil get on there well that one there is a quarter inch i believe <laughs> I don't, I don't understand things like that. No, it ain't quarter. 9.30 seconds. 9.30 seconds it is. How many of y'all, when you're working on something, talk to yourself? Um, that's basically what y'all see about 75% of the time. Just me talking to myself being goofy. Oh yeah, we got a good sparky spark now. All right, let me get some gasoline in the carburetor. Um, then we'll try to fire it up. I tell you what, I need a new squirt bottle. The top of it's all cracked. I think I get more gas outside of the carburetor than I do in it. A little bit growing. All right, fire in the hole. Look at there. Yeah. All right, 
either the gas tank is empty or we got the lines crudded up. I meant to get a fuel filter at O'Reilly's, forgot all about it. I see gas leaking out of the carburetor too. Coming from the uh, accelerator pump. This is a Holly. Um, yeah. So probably, uh, probably need to pull that carburetor off, go through it. Yeah, I'll do that. Tell you what I want to do before I pull this carburetor off. Let's take this fuel line loose and uh, uh, see if that fuel pump is doing anything. Or is it bad? Or is the tank empty? I don't know, to be honest. May have to, well, there's a little fuel come out of it then. Well, no, that's water. Yes, sir. That was water, what that was. All right, well, we're probably gonna drain that gas tank. Yep. Anyway, let's fire it up and see, uh, see if it's pumping anything. Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. I've got my wires caught up in the darn fan. All right, let's try this again. Yes, she's pumping. That ain't nothing but straight water. Sure enough. Yep. I'm going to let it sit here and run pump it out, I guess. Tell you what I'm going to have to do. We'll just... Uh, take a line loose at the tank, drain it out, because that is pretty much all water. A little bit of gas, but it's pretty much all water. All right, look at this line off. See how much water we get. Well, my bucket won't get under it all the way. Well, that's gonna have to do. I can tell that's water though, it just don't even look like gasolines. Come off of there, you son of a gun, you. All right, I'll drain that in the bucket. And then we'll put that line back on, put some fresh gasolines in it, and it ought to run. Well, I got about a half a gallon out of it, and y'all probably can't see it, but I'd say about a third of that's water, so that's good. But here's the thing. Uh, the uh, pickup line, well, it goes in the top and don't go in the bottom. So this line will go all the way down here to the bottom. So I just siphoned off gas don't know how much I got, how much is left in the tank. It don't sound like there's much anything in it. So hopefully we got all the water out at least. Uh, I'm gonna put some fresh in it. I've done put the hose back on and uh, we'll go back up front and let it pump out a minute and then hook it back up to the carburetor and see if it'll sit there and run. I'm letting it sit here and run and uh, hopefully pump what's left out of that line out. Uh, it quit pumping so I think we're good there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some gasolines in that tank and. Uh, Let's just see if old girl sat here and run for a minute. I'm gonna pump the fuel out of the tank. It ain't wanting to do it. We either got a stopped up line or the fuel pump's on this man. Yes, sir. I believe either the fuel pump went bad or we stopped the line up. Well, upon further inspection, I believe we're gonna need a fuel pump and some fuel line. This line right here, that's the suction line going to the fuel pump from the tank. Well, firstly, see this shiny part? Let me get down there where you can see it. See that shiny part? That was not supposed to come out of the fuel pump, but it did. So we're gonna need a fuel pump because of that. And I got up under here looking at it and I thought it looked wet on the bottom of that hose. Well, I don't know if y'all can see that or not, but it's split there. So yeah, that's maybe why it quit pumping. So we'll go ahead and get a fuel pump and Take that carburetor off and clean it up good too. Well, okay, I gotta find that. <laughs> Where in the devil did that go? I'll never find that. That's all. That don't beat all I've ever seen. That sucker is gone. I just don't understand how something can just disappear. I found it, I found it. Let me try that again. I believe what I'm gonna do to make this a lot easier. Let's get this power steering pump out of my dad blame way. Okay. 
Whatever you do, don't put a hole in this radiator. Golly. Get you out of the way. Whatever you do, do not hit that radiator, sir. Not is. I reckon we'll get the old carburetor off now. I sort of think it may have a governor like that uh, C50 had. I ain't never in my life seen it take so much just to get that off of there. Where did my screwdriver go? I had it up here. Spring a langa. Better get the spring a langa loose. Well, <laughs> there's no way possible to get that nut off. Unless I take this apparatus here off. I tell you what, I'd like to get a hold of some of these engineers. Just, just wring their neck. That's just stupid. It's just stupid. I tell you what, if I was an engineer <laughs> and I couldn't do no better than this right here, I'd quit. I would quit. I'd, I'd pick up cans on the side of the road. That's that's how I'd make my living. Well, 47 years later, I finally got that one little nut. 47 years is what it took. All right, now that I got all the nuts loose, get the old carbon roster off, and we'll take it home and clean it up. All right, I got the fuel filter housing off of the fuel pump. <laughs> Let me tell you what. What in the devil is going on with that? Goodness gracious alive. It's... It's an inch thick down in the bottom of that. Uh, I'm assuming it's rust. Wow. Ain't no telling what that tank looks like. That ain't good. And then I got the carburetor tore apart. Let me tell you. Well, it looks like there's sand in it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's absolutely filthy. Look in there. Yep. I got three gallons of the barium and chem dip. I think I'm going to put it in one of these buckets right here, all three gallons. And we'll just we'll just drop this off in it and leave it for a day or so. Let it get clean. Cause that right there's nasty. And then I gotta try to find a kit for it too. Well it's the next day. The carburetor it soaked overnight in the chem dip and it did really good on this part here. But the fuel bowl, well, she's still pretty nasty. That corrosion there, that's from water. Uh, I've never seen, well, firstly, I don't think I've ever seen a carburetor that dirty, that nasty. And two, I've never seen that much water coming out of one. I, I don't know where it came from. It's like somebody poured water in a gas tank and said, hey, let's run it. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to clean this up. And uh, the fuel pump, you know, I've had time to ponder on it. I always ponder on what I'm working on when I get home at night. Well, that fuel pump was working pretty good. Then it just stopped. So, well, y'all saw how nasty the filter was. And that's why I will be in the fuel lines too. So what we're going to do, I may take my little air compressor or my little air tank. We'll blow back through that line, make sure it's clear. And I'm going to keep uh, using that fuel pump because I, I think it's okay. Uh, if I can find a filter, I'll put it back in that filter canister. But, uh, yeah, we're going to use that fuel pump. Get this all cleaned up. Hopefully we can get this fuel system working again like it should. Lips are burning from the gasolines. <laughs> Never blow on a fuel filter that has really old gas. Well, any gas, because it's going to burn your lips. What in the world is wrong with me? <laughs> Cobb roster rebuilt. It was pretty good. The old Kim Dip did good. I didn't have any stopped up holes, but the acceleratory pump area, eh, it ain't looking good. Really corroded. Got a little check ball in it. It's captured. You can't get it out. It's pretty corroded. And the little aluminum seat for it, pretty bad. So we probably ain't going to have much of a pump shot on that carburetor. Uh, fuel pump, she's looking good. I got it all cleaned up. I believe it'll be all right. This is the fuel filter uh, housing, canister, whatever you want to call it. Got it good and cleaned up. This little filter right here, they wanted $55 for it. You remember how bad it looked? Well, I cleaned it up. I think it'll be just fine. I like to have a filter before the fuel pump, so we're gonna put that back in there. Uh, got me a new inline filter here right for the carburetor. Um, I think it's time to go put all this stuff back on. 
Alrighty, I have took entirely too much time today uh, working on that carb roster and the fuel pump and all that. I ain't got a whole lot of daylight left. But I think what I'm gonna do first is get my little air tank out and blow through this fuel line here. I'm not gonna take it loose from the other end. We'll just blow it into the tank. I'll take the gas cap off. Uh, but I need to do that first because my little air tank, well, she's got a leak and well, it ain't gonna last very long. So let me do that first. All right, let's blow this line out real quick like y'all listen see if we get air through the gas tank oh yeah yes sir i believe we're good there all right next thing i need to do uh the line coming from the gas tank up here it has a threaded connection it goes rubber and then into the uh, fuel pump that's the rubber hose right here that you know was split um I need to replace it because it looks pretty doggone bad. So let me get that loose. I don't have another fitting, so we're just going to have to rig something up there. All right, there's the hose I was telling you about. It looks pretty bad, really bad actually, but it's got this threaded flare fitting. I got to rig up something. What I may do is just cut it off here and stick a hose on there with a hose clamp. Let's see if that'll work. Alrighty, I had to come back home to uh, rig up this fitting here. This is the uh, threaded fitting that was on the end of the rubber hose. Well, I had to come home, put it in the vise, cut this off uh, with a cutoff wheel. They gave me this little nub, put my hose over it, and I'm gonna hose clamp it to it. That should work. Let's go back to the truck. All right, let's get this fuel pump back on. There's that fitting that I just cut stuff off of. I got my hose clamped to it. I think it'll work just finely. I'm trying to turn this, get that eccentric for that fuel pump out of the way, so I ain't got to fight that. Ooh. Get that fuel pump back on. Let me get this fuel line back on here. Now, what could I have done with those wrenches? I don't. I didn't need them anywhere, but right here. I swear. I'd misplaced my head if it wasn't attached to my body. Sure it would. All right, I got that hose on. I guess it's time to put the power steering back on. Son of a gun. Man alive, my back is hurting. It's a good thing I don't do this for a living. Whew. Power steering is back on. All right, let's put the carburetor back on. I'm gonna give it a brand new gasket. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Y'all remember this nut here? It took like 98 hours to get it off. Well, I hope it don't take that long to get it back on. Ooh, believe it or not, it only took 36 hours that time. So I guess I'm improving. There's a chalk cabinet here somewhere. Chalk, Mr. Chalk. Come here, Mr. Chalk. Also, and oh, by the way, uh, this is a governor. It's just like, well, it's really similar to Fagan, the blue uh, C50 I worked on a few weeks ago. Yes, sir, it is a governor. Well, I seem to have lost the return spring for the throttle. It is not in the back of the truck. It's probably at the house. If I go get it, come back, it'll be dark by the time I get back. So uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and change the Earl. We'll call it a day. We'll come back tomorrow, and hopefully the thing will fire up so it'll run, the fuel pump will work, and all that good stuff. Let us see if we can change this Earl. Let us see if we can change this Earl. There may or may not have been an oil spill. I cannot tell you. Here's a little FYI for you. That oil pan doesn't have a sump. It is full depth, the entire length of that motor. I'm assuming all big truck motors are probably like that. This sucker probably gonna hold two plus gallons of oil. Well, I'm sort of unprepared today, apparently. I did not bring a finale, so I had to improvise and make one out of a water bottle. I have no clue how much oil this holds either. Hiya! 
So I'm just gonna put a galleon in it. I'm gonna check it. And then I'll just keep putting it in until it gets full. That's about the only thing I know to do. There's one galleon. Oh, you son of a gun. I broke my face. Dipstick says they ain't even touching. According to the dipstick, I oh, need to add probably three quarts. I believe it's going to hold more than two gallons. Check it again, check it again, check it again. It says it needs one. It says add one, I'm assuming that's quarts. So, probably need to get two. Uh, to allow for the filter to be filled up too. So yeah, I'll get another gallon tomorrow, I guess. What in the devil? I find that to be a little ridiculous. I reckon that's it for today, cause well, I'm a Dumas. Forgot the spring, need more oil. I'm just, well, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Tell you what, before we go home, let's just look in this master cylinder here. Um. <laughs> I ain't even sure I can get that top off. It's so bad. It's got, uh, what do you call it? Hydrovac. Um, if you don't know what that is, it, this is your master cylinder. It's just one line. Then it goes down to a brake booster with a, another valve. It sort of, sort of looks like another master cylinder. But this, all it does is operate a valve that makes the booster work. And then that makes the fluid move to the brakes. And if your booster goes out, you still got manual brakes a little bit. But yeah, it's kind of a different setup from just regular old uh, vacuum assist. But it looks like we're gonna need a master cylinder. And he said the booster was out, but I think what we'll do, we'll just put a master cylinder on it first and see what happens with that. But I was wanting to get the top off just to see if there's any fluid in it, but well, that ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna do a little body work on his grill. I already did that side, it's caved in, and I don't like it. So let's fix it. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. Ain't too bad. We'll leave it. Well, it's been two or three days since I've fooled with this thing. Uh had to order some parts and then had other things to do. Uh I don't really remember where I left y'all off at. I think we was fixing to start working on the brakes. So I pulled the uh, master cylinder off and well, fluid come out of both ends. It ain't supposed to do that, just one end. It's the only place it's supposed to come out. <laughs> so it's definitely bad. I found one locally, went and got it. So I'm fixing to put it back on and we're gonna bleed the brakes. I'll have to call a lovely assistant, get them over here and bleed them brakes. And uh, I looked in the fuel tank a minute ago with a flashlight, she looks pretty clean. So I think we're good to go there. So once we get the brakes bled, uh, we'll fire this thing up, let it sit here and I will warm up completely and make sure everything's okay. And then we gotta address that tire right there. That ain't gonna be fun. All right, I'm gonna struggle a little bit with this because I ain't in a good position to get to it. It's a dead blame far away, no matter what I do. So this should be fun. Well, boot came off, well, the boot fell. Let's see if I can get this boot on. <clears throat> All right. Ooh. I'll get that on here a little bit. I'm just trying to get the bolts in. A uh, very, very precarious position. I can't even get that. I'm gonna have to get up in the hood, I guess, in the engine compartment. Well, well, oh crap, about fell right then. That would not be good. Oh crap, about fell right then too. Woo. Somebody tell me again, why do I do this for a living? <laughs> I don't know. We might have made new threads on that one. You suppose to bench bleed this? Well, we're going to uh, wilderness bleed it. How about that? I gotta get out of here. Ooh. What you want to do on this as far as the bench bleeding, put this plug in and uh, you just want to stroke it about an inch. That's it. Eventually it'll work the air bubbles out and 
you only get an eighth of an inch or less of movement. When you're there, then it's, it's a bench bled. You can hook your line back up. And of course, I'm not prepared. I've only got all maybe that much brake fluid. <laughs> so I'll probably have to go to the store and get some because I'm going to spill half of it here because, well, you, you can't get it in it. Let me see if I got a funnel. How to make me a finale. I don't know how good it's going to work. Oh, it might work. Well, I overfilled it and I'm out of brake fluid, so this is going to go really well. All right, I'm going to go in here and push this pedal a little bit, see if we can get this master cylinder bled. Well, she don't want to bleed out here in the wilderness, so I'm going to have to get a lovely assistant out here to help me. Uh, I have to do that about half time anyway when I put a new master cylinder on. But y'all remember, uh, if you got some kind of adapter on your master cylinder like this right here, Make sure that you get that copper washer off the old master cylinder. Don't just put the fitting on there without the washer because she's going to leak. I guarantee you that. Well, there's been an unfortunate turn of events. Uh, got under here to bleed these lines and this one right here. Well, she decided she wanted to blow a hole. This is the, the booster, by the way. You know, it's up under the truck. Remember I told you the booster and what appears to sort of look like another master cylinder. Anyway, that line there busted, so I gotta get it off and make another one. Well, I had to come back to the house and get me some brake line so I can make a new brake line here. And well, this, it's got some kind of wrap on it. I don't know why. It's not near exhaust, so I don't know the purpose of this other than to hold moisture and rot the line. There's, there's a rotten spot right there. I peeled some of that stuff back. There's another portion of brake line that's got this on it. I will be cutting it off when I get back to the truck. Well, there's my brake line I just made right there. Got her put on. Uh, seems to fit pretty good. So let's head up front and I'll uh, fill the master seal up. Let's try to bleed this thing again. Well, here's where we're at with the brake situation. It, it, it ain't looking good. <laughs> I can't get any pedal. I've bled three of the four wheels. And, well, I'm on the uh, driver's side now. And uh, see the hose over there? I'm not getting anything out of the other end of it. I am getting it right here where it goes in. So it tells me my hose is, well, it's stopped up. So I'm trying to get it loose right now so I can uh, try to find another one. I probably won't find another one. And how hey, you like my little twig plug right there? It's not working, so uh, just ignore that. <laughs> uh, and then I'm watching the fluid drip off the frame right here. Don't know why, but it won't quit dripping. That's just below the uh, master cylinder. So we've probably got another line busted somewhere. So. That's good. Anyway, I'm having a pretty good day, so I'm gonna continue working on the brakes. 47 years later, I finally got this brake hose off. I'll have to take it off these brackets, I'm sure. But that was just, well, that was a pretty good battle in and of itself. I won that battle though, so that's good. It's raining. Uh, don't ask me why I'm standing out in it, because I really don't know. But I put the battery in it because, well, I wanna hear this thing run. You know, I rebuilt the carburetor and uh, clean the fuel system out fuel lines and all that well i want to hear the thing run so we're gonna fire it up and let it run and i might try to get that tire off while it warms up i'm gonna try to get some gas done in the car roster with this homemade squirt bottle give it a little drink let's see what she'll do for a fuel pump is pumping or not. Let me take this line loose. I need to fill that fuel filter up with gasoline. That, that'll help it out quite a bit. So let me do that after I get this line off. All right, fuel filter is full. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put this line back on. Well, I just don't want gas spraying everywhere. Starting a fire. We already did that a week or two ago. Well, <laughs> I don't feel like doing that again. All right, let's try it again.
Well, that's more than enough time for the fuel pump to have picked up and started pumping, so I don't know what's wrong with it. Well, I've been scratching my head trying to figure out what in the world's going on with this fuel system. So I decided to come back here to the fuel tank, took my fuel sending unit out, because I wanted to look down in there. More specifically, I wanted to see this pickup tube. Maybe it fell off, maybe it rusted. Well, that all looks good. So I got to looking a little bit further and it's got a valve for an auxiliary tank. And well, it doesn't have an auxiliary tank. Let me show you underneath what I did. Right here is that valve for auxiliary tank. And well, it doesn't have an auxiliary tank that's not being used. This line right here is the one coming out of it. It went here, that line goes up to the front and right here is where it came into the valve out of the tank right here. Well, I just bypassed that and went out of the tank to the line going up front. And well, when I was pulling this line off, you can see that there's just flippity flappy flopping everywhere. So it's very possible that it was sucking air right here at this fitting. That's most likely what was going on. So, uh, well, also, let me show you this hose. This hose here came from here, and well, it's just, well, I mean, you can see, it's breaking in half. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go back up there and fill the carburetor up again, and we're gonna give it another try and see if that ain't the problem. Let me fill the old carburetor up one more time. All right, fingers crossed that this fixes this issue, because if it doesn't, well, this will be two L's that I've took today, and I don't like losing. <laughs> No, sir. I ain't got nary a clue. Well, this ain't been the best of days. I don't like taking ales, but I took two today working on this old Ord right here. I'm going to buy a fuel pump. We'll see if that fixes it. If not, then, well, I don't know. Well, it's the next day. We're going to work on this Ord again today. <laughs> I ordered two brake hoses last night from Rocketo. Hopefully, they'll be here within the week. Uh, got a fuel pump from O'Reilly coming. Hopefully it'll be here in a couple of hours. Y'all might be wondering, why didn't you just go ahead and order a fuel pump, you know, two or three days ago? Well, if you know me, you know, I like to use what we got. I don't like just throwing parts at stuff. Um, that fuel pump, it pumped way too good when we first started this truck up. And I have a hard time believing it just blew the diaphragm all of a sudden, which, you know, that can happen. But when I was cleaning it up, you know, I was pumping it by hand and it, you know, I could feel it suck. So... That's why I just, well, I just don't think it's fuel pump, but we're going to find out. I hope that does fix it. Uh, anyway, whilst we wait on the fuel pump to get here, I'm going to try to get this wheel off. That's going to be fun, fun, fun. All right, I have a very large ratchet right here. I'm going to try to break these lug nuts loose with. I hope I do not injure my back. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Good gracious, they're tight. Ooh. All right, it went a lot smoother than I thought it would. Now I got to get this 22,000 pound jack out of the back of the truck. I don't know why they got to make them so dad blame heavy. Ooh. These are a 295, 75. R225. That means they're a radial. And, well, they can be a pain. Oh! oh! They can be a pain to get off the truck. They can be a pain to get aired up, too, though. Come out of there, you son of a gun. Ooh! 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 That's good for my back. Two or three weeks ago when I come looked at this truck, I just glanced at the wheel, saw that tire was flat, and it looked like a split rim. And I was like, eh, I ain't fooling with that. And probably won't find anybody else that will. Uh, I'm not talking about the lock ring type. I'm talking about the actual split rim that is outlawed. Uh, you know, I've changed the lock ring type. I don't know how many of them I've changed in my day. Back when I used to work at the tire shop. Anyway, it ain't. It's just a 22.5. They got a tapered uh, bead right here. 22.5, 19.5, 24.5, 16.5. 
they all got that taper bead thing. It'd be aggravating to get aired up sometimes. Well, I'm gonna drop this off at the tire shop. There's one just right up the road. And then hopefully uh, I'll check and see if the fuel pump's here. If it is, we'll go pick it up. Well, I'm back from Ireland. Got my fuel pump right there. Got a tire put on that wheel. We'll get it put on in a minute. Uh, I had to put dude in service as my work truck yesterday because the full drive, it blew a head gasket. Well, it blew a head gasket several months ago, but I was still able to drive it. I put some bars leak in it and that fixed it for a while. Well, it's gotten bad again and it actually built up so much pressure in the cooling system that it busted the radiator hose. So I had to park it till we could fix it. Well, <laughs> on the way over here, uh, my clutch pedal started going away and dude, popped the hood and the hose, well, it's starting to leak pretty bad. So I guess I'm gonna have to park this and I'll be down to my little S10. So yeah, I got to help start working on my vehicles again. Anyway, let's get this uh, wheel and tire on this truck and then we'll get the fuel pump on it. Maybe, maybe the fuel pump will fix it and we'll let it sit here and run for a little bit. All right, let me struggle with this heavy son of a gun. Hey, what? I don't miss doing this for a living at all. Ugh. wondering what I'm doing uh, to get this type of wheel running straight you lay something on the ground next to the tire spin it and you see the tire go in and out that tell you which ones you need to tighten up loosen to get it straight it's out right there it's in right there so I need to loosen these and tighten these Not bad, not bad at all. I'm gonna let it down now and tighten these up. I'd like to warm me out right there. All right, I'm gonna get this fuel pump out of here and get it swapped out. I ain't gonna make y'all sit through that. Y'all done seen that movie before. So I'll be back when I get it done. All right, here is the new fuel pump. Here's the old fuel pump. There's a little bit of difference, but the most important part is this here, and that's the same. Uh, you know, it's got the filter just like this one. This new pump costs $35. Uh, the filter alone for them costs $55. Somebody explain that to me because <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. You know, how can you sell this for $35 with a filter or just a filter for $55? Anyway, this old one, it comes apart. You see all the screws? We'll take it apart in a minute and look at it. And it's got a tag on it. So... I bet you we can get a rebuild kit for it. So I'm gonna keep that, cause that'll fit Dumas. Anyway, let me get this new one on. All right, fuel pump is changed out. I'm gonna take that fuel filter housing off, fill it up with gasolines, and you know, it'll help it prime a little bit. Fingers crossed that this fixes this thing, it's gonna sit here and run. All right, here we go. pulled the choke off and it knocked it off fast idle let me start her again let's see if the squirters are working first eh sort of i reckon she ain't gonna run without choke reminiscent of uh, Dumas sure is those who don't know you set the float level by taking this out starting it up and you want the fuel just to barely trickle out you adjust it with this screw right here and then lock it down with the nut
So y'all see the color of that fuel? That may be part of the issue. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to drain that whole tank. When I took the sending unit out yesterday, looking down in it, it was half full. I thought it was almost empty. Well, it's it's half full. So, and I can see water mixing with gas right there as it drips out. So, yeah. Uh, I'll just go back home and get my little pump and uh, we'll pump that out. Well, I got my little pump here, pumping this tank out. <laughs> there is so much rust in the bottom of this tank. I cannot put it all the way down because it just goes picking up rust and locks it up. And well, she's an orangish color. I don't know. There's some rough gas coming out of this tank here. Uh, I sure hope I don't have to pull this tank all the way out. Uh, just, I was not counting on doing that. Well, fellas, that tank, she's, she's pretty bad. It's a lot of rust. And I mean, a lot of rust in the bottom of it, I do believe. So yeah, we're going to pull that tank out. Uh, you know, he wants to use the truck on the farm and I'm not going to leave him with a tank full of rust and having to worry about stopping up fuel lines. And yeah, I'm just not going to do that. Uh, we're going to pull the tank and you know, I thought it was empty. Then I said, no, it's half full. And I said, no, it's empty. Well, it was empty when I thought it was empty. And then I put six gallons in it. There's a six gallons right there. So anyway, let's pull this stupid tank out. All right, let's get her out boys. All right, that's a half inch, not a nine sixteenths. We'll have to take the uh, fuel bowl back off the carburetor too to drain it. And that uh, accelerator pump, I think it was leaking a little bit around the gas. So I'll have to take that off and fix it too. You know what's really aggravating? Is when the worm drive thing and bob comes out of a dad blame hose clamp. That's just, well, it's just aggravating what it is. Oh, yeah. I got two bolts over there, and then we'll be ready to pull it out. Y'all get out of my way. All right, let's see if it'll come out. Well, we got the gas tank out and I just went ahead and pulled the bowl off the carburetor and well, she's got a nice rusty color to it. So that's good. Uh, that puddle of stuff right there. Well, that's mostly water. So that's even better. Uh, what I'm gonna do is spray this out with carb cleaner, leave it sitting here and let it dry out overnight. And hopefully the water will get out of everything. Uh, we're gonna take that tank home, I guess right now and go to cleaning on it. Also, and oh, by the way, I had to post online last night on one of the Ford forums. Uh, posted the VIN number, and the feller apparently has got a lot of books. He looked up the VIN number, and this is a 330 FT motor. Figured it would be an FT motor, I just wasn't sure of the size. But anyway, now you know. Well, we're back at the house, and I just took the gas tank, tipped it up, emptied it out. <laughs> just look at what come out of that tank. Goodness gracious, alive. that is ridiculous right there. Anyway, I'm going to grab some of these rocks up, throw it in there, shake it around. Maybe we can get it cleaned out. Uh, some of y'all wonder why I use rocks. Well, I literally have tons and tons of rocks. That's why I use them. Nuts and bolts, they're okay to use too. Uh, they're probably easier to get out if they get stuck. All you got to do is grab them with a magnet or something like that. Uh, I'll tell you a little story. <laughs> My lovely assistant across the road over there, Mason. <laughs> He decided he needed to clean a gas tank on a tractor one day. This has been a couple months ago. Well, he got in some chain, throwed it in the gas tank, went shaking it around. Oh, well, actually, I think he uh, hooked it to the back tire of a tractor, you know, spun it around, left it for however long. Well, the chain tied itself in knots, and <laughs> he couldn't get the chain back out of the tank. So, my advice to you is don't use chain to clean your tank. Let's rock and roll. Don't mind me. 
I'm just getting some chocolate milk out of this gas tank here. If you ever drop a piece of PVC down in your gas tank, <laughs> like I just did, we'll get you a pair of these right here because they do pretty good to get it out. I was using that to scratch the sides because I'm telling you, it looked like barnacles. Uh, anyway, the water's coming clean now, but I want to show y'all something else. Watch this area right in here. Oh, yeah. She got holes. She got lots and lots of holes. There's some up here, all in there. Some right in here. I think it stops about midway, but I'm going to have to fill it up and make sure. Uh, the only thing I know to do is put some JB Weld over them. I would get a tank liner kit, but it would take three or four days to get it. I don't have that kind of time, so we're going to do the JB Weld. Well, I got it about as clean as I can get it. Uh, it's still got barnacle stuff on the sides. That's what I was using that piece of PVC for, trying to scrape that off, and it just it won't come off. I'm going to try to get y'all in there where you can see it. Oh, yeah, see that right there? She ain't a-coming off. So I'm going to call it good. Uh, I think I'm going to set it in the front of the fan and let it blow in it and dry it out a little bit. Then I'm going to fix these holes, and then I reckon it'll be time to put it back on the truck. Got my little squirrel cage fan blowing in it right there. Now we wait. I got the old fuel pump tore apart. The diaphragm, well, it looks pretty good. I don't think that was the issue. It's got two little check valves right here. Most likely they are the issue. It had a tag. I looked that number up. Rebuild kit. I don't know if it fits it or not. Uh, I think what we're going to do, we're going to chunk it in the trash. Well, I got her cleaned out, dried out. Got my holes JB welded up. Hopefully I found all of them. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Let's take this thing back over and put it in the truck. Da, 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 da. All right, let's get this rust bucket of a gas tank back in here. Oh, yeah! Well, I got the gasoline tank back in. Got everything hooked up here. I got the fuel line uh, blown out. I got the, I took the filter housing off the fuel pump up here and dumped all that out. It was mostly water. <laughs> and I blew this line out here going up to the carb roster. I got the fuel bowl back on it. All I left to do is fill it up with fuel and uh, let's see what it'll do. I was putting gas in it a minute ago and I got to smelling something. I got to looking around, found this right here. <laughs> Poor fella, he didn't make it. All right, who is ready to see if this thing gonna sit here and run now? I'm about tired of fooling with the fuel system on it. This little truck right here, really getting on my nerves. I don't know if I got the float set too high or if it's just sticking. Aggravating about all I can tell you. Let's 
Well, I do believe we finally got the fuel system <laughs> straightened out on this old truck. I've been getting one of there for a while. I got told y'all that is the worst fuel system I've ever seen in my life, and I've seen some pretty bad ones. Anyway, she's sitting there hiding like a brand new one right now. It ain't smoking a bit. So, pretty doggone good. I don't have a timing light. I'll have to go get it or bring it back next day I come because we still got to do brake work on this thing. But anyway, I'm very glad to have this thing running. Well, it appears that the alternator's good. Got very good oil pressure. It's already up to operating temperature. The whole thing runs pretty good. Uh, you know, it's got a little hesitation, but I believe that's probably timing. It's popping back through the carb roster a little bit, so uh, I'll have to set the timing. But other than that, the whole thing runs pretty good. There's a noise over here on the driver's side. It sort of sounds like spark plug wire arcing out. Uh, you know, I wasn't real sure. So I got to poking around. Y'all watch this spark plug moving around when I put the camera down there. I don't know if you can see that or not. The spark plug's sitting there jumping back and forth. It's loose. So I'm going to cut it off and I'm going to check all the plugs and make sure they're all good and tight. Well, you know, I'm getting this old truck running so he can use it on the farm again. I'm assuming he wants that bed to dump. Uh, here's the controls right here. One of them works the pump, the other one opens the valve. Well, <laughs> they are stuck. I mean, froze solid. So, I guess whilst the wait on the brake hoses and stuff like that, let's see if we can't get them unstuck. All right, I think I know what the issue is with these cables. Uh, this right here is where it sticks through the floor. It's got this little nut the screws on it and hold it in place. Well, it was binding up on this nut. So I've sanded the shaft down and I'm gonna oil it up before I put it back together. Pretty sure that's what's wrong with that one too. So I'll take it apart and clean it up. Hopefully we'll have that fixed. Well, I had to come over here. This is the pump. And then this is the valve up here that works the hydraulics, the bed up and down. Well, the valve, the thing, the lever from the cable, it's right here. And it was froze up. So I had to come over here and use my big old chanty locks to uh, get it broke free. And I just happened to notice something dripping right, right up in there. See that dripping? Yep. That's a gas tank. <laughs> I give up. I just give up. Well, there's the second cable right there I was working on. You might be wondering, well, why is it not on the truck? Why is it out here? <laughs> Let me tell you. She didn't want to free up. I may or may not have gotten a little rough with it. Well, the sheath pulled out of this end here. And, well, I broke the bolt on the adjuster on this end. So that's good, too. I'm going to take it home, work with it, see if I can't get it freed up. If not, well, we'll have to buy another one. Well, I pulled the old gas tank out, and the leak is back here on the back side on the bottom somewhere. I just see fluid coming out. I don't know where exactly. I think it's right in that area. The old tank is extremely, extremely rusty on the inside. Uh, I can't find an F600 tank, but it looks very, very similar to the gas tank in Dumas. So I'm gonna take it home and we're gonna measure the bolt holes and length and all that. If it looks like a F100 tank will fit, then that may be what we do, just get a new tank. Well, I talked to the owner here a few days ago and we decided to just go ahead and get a brand spankingly new gas tank. There it is. Uh, I'd also found out why the tank seemed to be half full of water. It was put in there intentionally. <laughs> I ain't gonna tell you the whole story, but yep, that's what happened. Uh, this is an F100 tank. This is the F600 tank. Bolt holes are a little different. Uh, I wanna do a little bit of drilling and whatnot to make it fit. So let me get that in the truck and uh, get some measurements and uh, hopefully it won't take too long. All right, I just got the gas tank put in. And it appears that the three bolt holes in the middle are going to line up. There's two on the end right here. I'll have to drill for them. So that's good. I don't have to drill all the rest of them. But the bottom, there's not even any metal where the bolt holes normally are. So I think what I'll do is just get me a piece of metal and drill this bolt pattern and just bolt it up there. Because I'm afraid if I don't bolt the bottom, this thing's full of gas. He hits the brakes hard. It's going to do that right there. I don't want that to happen. So that's that's what I'll do down there. We now have a brand spankingly new gasoline tank in this old truck. 
there's one of the holes I had to drill. I had to do the other one on that end. Instead of doing little pieces of metal down here, well, I just got some big old flat whooshers put there. I think that'll be just fine. I had to cut this neck off because this neck was longer than the stock tank. Uh, I think that'll be just fine. Dare I say it? <laughs> do we finally have this fuel system taken care of? I don't know. I sure hope so. Oh, also, oh, by the way, watch this. That engages PTO. That turns the valve on and off. Oh, yeah. The only thing left, as far as I can tell, is to put two brake hoses on the front, one on the back, and bleed the brakes. We might be done with this old truck. Well, I got the brake hoses changed out. I'm on the driver's side front right now. I just wanted to show y'all this, <laughs> this amazing feat of engineering that I just discovered. <laughs> Instead of running this hose all the way on down to here where your wheel cylinder is, well, they stopped here. They put a bracket and then put a little short metal line right here. Why? Can somebody tell me why? I broke this line off. You know, it twisted off, so now I get to go back home. I think this will be the fifth time today <laughs> to make that little line right there. But all they had to do was run this rubber hose on down to here. Well, I got the brakes bled. They feel pretty good. I think now I'm gonna fire it up, let it warm up and set the timing and we'll check to see if the dump bed's gonna work. And I think after that, it might be time to drive the old girl around the farm. Well, there's been an unfortunate series of events that's happened yesterday. Yes, it is the next day again. I didn't get to work on it maybe an hour yesterday. Um, well, it just went haywire, sort of like Dumas did. I don't know what it is about me and Ford Carburosters, but we just don't get along. Um, I fired it up, gonna let it warm up. Well, I checked the dump bed, you know, and it worked fine. Uh, come out here, gonna start tuning on the carburetor a little bit. And well, gas yeah, started pouring out the governor over here. I shut it off, looked in the carburetor, and gas was coming out of the Venturis. So it told me the float level, somehow it adjusted itself. This is a self-adjusting self float. Anyway, pulled this plug out of the side of the carburetor so I could adjust the float level. Well, I didn't take it out all the way. I screwed it off almost all the way. Uh, fired it back up and uh, went to tapping on the carburetor with a screwdriver. Somehow this plug flew out. <laughs> it hit the fan. I heard it hit that inner fender over there, and where it's at now, that's anybody's guess. Uh, I had to go home and uh, uh, rob a plug out of one of my four barrel hollies. That's it right there. Uh, long story short, this carburetor wants a higher float level than it should. I don't know why, but it does. Uh, went to adjusting on the carburetor, and it got to missing the motor just shaking. And you're not going to adjust the carburetor unless it's hitting on all cylinders. So I decided let's put some plugs and wires on it. Of course, the store didn't have them, so I had to order them. Well, it's the next day. <laughs> I just got done putting the plugs and wires on. I'm going to fire it up, and uh, hopefully the miss is gone. And maybe we can adjust this carburetor. And just maybe, finally, we can take this thing for a ride around the farm. I'm beginning to think I'm never going to get this, this truck done. All right, I got the plugs and wires changed. <laughs> it didn't make a bit of difference. I'm telling you. This truck is just really getting on my nerves. Um, I pulled the wires off the distributor again. It's cylinders one, four, six, and seven that uh, RPM never changes when you pull that plug wire off. So I bet you money, if I looked it up on interwebs and found out which which cylinders fed to which side of the carburetor, I bet you one, four, six, and seven feed to the passenger side. Because like I told you, I can fool with the uh, idle mixture screw turned all the way in it has no effect on it i even put my hand over the carburetor and blocked most of the air and she'll perk up uh idle up and just be smooth as can be so that tells me we're either getting too much air vacuum leak or not enough fuel that's carburetor i fixed to take some carb cleaner spray all around it see if i can find a vacuum leak somewhere well i sprayed a whole can of carb cleaner around that carburetor it never once wanted to idle up. So I took it off and uh, I'm going through it. Uh, it occurred to me after the <laughs> after I got the carburetor off that, you know, it's the passenger side that's giving trouble. That's the side the governor's on. And it's got a vacuum port 
here it goes to the distributor uh it, it works a little valve down in there for the governor part well watch this right here here's the vacuum port it goes up goes this way and goes across and then comes out here well let me spray some carb cleaner on this point right here and watch do that see how tiny that is what i don't understand is why did it not rev up when i squirted carb cleaner all around it anyway i gotta pull this governor stuff off make a gasket for that and fingers crossed well let me cross my fingers fingers crossed that this fixes the carburetor issue well i got the carburetor back on and i didn't fix it i didn't think that little bit of leak was causing that much trouble but you know i had to eliminate it as a problem i guess i'll keep searching when i find it i'll be back well fellas i think i might have found the issue and it's way back here about midway of the truck y'all listen to the exhaust note change you hear it change let me turn it off and i'll tell you what that is remember me telling y'all that this truck had what they call hydrovac brakes and the booster is under the cab right there well when they have that type of brakes they're gonna have a vacuum reservoir that's what that is and this is the vacuum line going up to the intake i don't cut part of it out so i can go to the store and get the right size but this we see all them cracks that's where i spray them a carb cleaner and it would rev up every time i did that uh well let me let me show you up front how that is affecting only one side of the carburetor i should have done this while i had the carburetor off because you could see it better but cylinder one cylinder four cylinder six and seven runners they're all tied together on the passenger side of the carburetor why does that matter well here is your vacuum line going back to that tank if you follow it to the intake right there guess which runners that is hooked to cylinders one four six and seven that right there is why i've been chasing my tail just about all day long so i'm gonna go find some uh, vacuum line to replace that section and she ought to run like a brand new one now Well, that didn't help it. <laughs> I don't know if y'all can tell from the video, but got a bad hesitation off idle and uh, it just runs like garbage when you rev it up. Sound like it's hitting on about four or five cylinders. Nothing I have done has helped it other than holding my hand over the car roster like that. That would run perfect. <laughs> um, I don't, I'm at the point of putting a new carburetor on it. I'm gonna talk to the owner and see what he thinks and we'll go from there. Well, fellas, I just spent, I don't know, two hours uh, taking this carb roster apart again. And you can see it's in pieces. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this carb roster as far as anything being stopped up. There's nothing. The only thing I have found is this right here, the throttle shaft. I don't know if I can show you or not. Right there. It's got some slop in it. And, you know, that's going to that's gonna create a vacuum leak. But I've seen them a lot worse and run a lot better. Uh, I don't know if maybe Ford carburetors, they're just more sensitive to that. I don't know. What I do have is an old junk. I don't even know what it is. I looked up this number. Uh, where is it at? Right there. I think it come off a 63 F100 with a straight six. I went through it and cleaned it up, put a new accelerator pump, and I took the power valve out of the holly and put it in here. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it's the only choice I had right now. We're going to go put this carburetor on that truck. And if this carburetor makes that truck run better, then I'll say that throttle uh, uh, shaft play is the issue. And it's very well could be what's wrong with Dumas because it's got about the same amount of play in the throttle shaft too. And I will say this, if this fixes that truck, it's going to get put on Dumas to see if it'll fix it. Anyway, let's head over there and uh, put that carburetor on. Well, I got the carburetor on. And I ran it about 30 seconds just to get the float bowl filled up. Uh, it's not it's not hot. I'm touching the exhaust right now. It's not hot, not warm. Y'all watch this. 
This is without a choke. Now I'll tell you this too, I have touched nothing on this carburetor, no idle screws, no idle mixture screws, I've touched nothing on it. She's sitting there purring like a kitten. Watch this. Ain't not one bit of hesitation. Well, fellas, I believe we got our answer. Carburetor was the issue. Uh, it's sitting there running like a brand new one now. I did just a little bit of adjusting on it, smoothed it up a little bit more. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just to end this video, because I'll be working on this truck about two weeks off and on, having to wait on parts, and then it rained, I couldn't work on it. I want to get it done. So just to get this video done, I'm gonna hook up a throttle of some kind We'll take this thing for a ride around the farm. And then I'm probably going to order him one of them cheap Chinese car rosters off of Amazon. Put it on there and uh, that should take care of this truck. All right, let's take this thing for a ride around the farm, see how it does. Let's sun is really bright it's about to blind me anyway let me be the first to tell you i'm very glad to be done working on this ord like i said i worked on it for about two weeks off and on ordered parts had to wait on them it rained anyway glad to be done with it uh i probably could have saved a day or two if i wouldn't have fooled that carburetor so much but you know me i like to make what i got work we had a carburetor i tried to make it work it didn't want to so i'm gonna buy him a new one put it on there when it gets here but as far as i'm concerned we're done with that truck. Uh, 
let me say this real quick. A lot of y'all tell me I'm a very patient man. You say I got stick to itiveness. I don't give up. Well, that's true. And for the most part, it's pretty good, but it can be a fault sometimes, like spending way too long on a carburetor. Uh, well, let me tell you this real quick. I used to work in a factory about 25 years. 12 of those years, I was in maintenance as an industrial maintenance mechanic and electrician, also known as a multi-craft. Well, one of the guys I used to work with, he told me, he said, you're like a bulldog. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he said, when you get a hold of a machine, you don't turn it loose till it's done, till it's running. And that's true. Uh, and it can be a fault sometimes, but most of the time, that's how I learn. I don't just throw the parts away and go buy new ones. I try to make what I got work. Uh, sometimes that works, sometimes it don't. Anyway, appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you don't mind, hit the like, comment, subscribe. Share it with your friends. And until next time, go do something. Blurp, blurp.